So many people of this world are sleeping. They're people in a deep sleep, but still moving nonetheless. They're sleepwalking. And this state is comfortable for them. And they do not want to be woken up out of it. I mean, I get it. It's easy to live as if nothing is happening all around you. And in the end, you feel that everything will just work itself out. That's a nice, cozy feeling to have. Especially now that we're in football season and we got footballs on Sundays and Mondays and Thursdays. And we got all these television programs and new seasons. There's better things to do than pay attention to all this other noise and garbage. I mean, I get it. I know how the majority thinks. But the thing is that when you're aware of this world and what is actually going on, when you realize how many people are actually against you and how many people are working in an aggressive campaign of deception and lies to try to hurt you, you can't do anything else but make sure that you stay in reality and prepare for what is coming. And today at this time, it's probably the biggest time for us to be on high alerts, for us to be focused on what is happening all around us and what the narratives that they are using are all about and what they're pointing to. Those controlling this system have decided to keep us in a loop of uncertainty while providing these deceptive glimmers of hope that makes the unaware and unsuspecting feel like everything will work itself out. But those glimmers of hope is not based on reality, just by willful blindness. The unfortunate truth is that the majority of the world is going to be railroaded, sideswiped, without warning. And it is because they want everyone unprepared and reactive so they can herd that energy towards their agenda to serve their God. I gave a brief warning last week, and while I'm not led to explain my total view on YouTube, I do want to make sure that those committed to Yah are made aware and understand truly what is going on in this world. The narratives are all set up, the chess pieces are in place, and they signaled that they are ready to move. Do you really understand what's going on? If not, I'm going to show you right now. Let's begin. Okay, so I want to be very clear here. I have been warning of an economic collapse for many years on this channel. It's always been inevitable once the central bank started with their ridiculous rounds of quantitative easing with their exorbitant amount of money printing. They have propped up the world with free money and liquidity that the nations of the world have been relying on since 2008. It's like you raising a child and have been giving them free money over a decade that they had never had to work for. When they mess up, when unexpected times got hard, you always stepped in and made their life easier by bailing them out and giving them more free money. Now all of a sudden, you see that this child is spoiled and you need to fix it. So now you're cutting off that free money and they need to actually work for a living. The child has gotten so dependent off of you that they don't know how to live without your support. And this child will go through some very difficult times especially if during those times that you were propping him up, they made other bad choices with their life as well. There will be a lot of pain ahead for them. I hope that example makes sense because that is exactly what is going on right now, not just with America, but all across the world. The narrative is all about inflation, but you must understand that this is all by design. They have a new system ready to come online. I mean, with Ethereum, they just upgraded their system. And so they engaged in a scheme from the last economic crisis of our time in 2008 and put the whole world on the same path. They got the whole world addicted to free money. And after what they did with COVID, they now had a scapegoat and a good reason why they did what they did. And now they can move as if they're just trying to fix it. But let's be clear that there is no getting around this. If you're following them and just allowing them to dictate to you how this will all transpire, you will be led off of a cliff. There is no way to get around what's coming. And it's very important that you live in reality when it comes to all of this. So let's just take a look at it from the history of their narrative. Since the beginning of the year, we have been hearing about inflation. Inflation that is the highest that it has ever been in over 40 years. And the Central Bank of the United States, the Federal Reserve, has been hiking interest rates aggressively. If you look at this chart, this is a chart of the federal funds rate. This is the rate that the Federal Reserve controls. Please take note that since April of 2020, all the way up till March of this year, we've been at a rate of 0% interest, meaning 
banks were able to receive money from the Fed with no cost of interest to them. And then in March, they started raising rates aggressively. So now the interest rate is now at 2.25%, two and a quarter. And we will go up next week again, probably to 3%. And this is a rate we have not seen since January of 2008. So we're going back to rates before the Great Recession. I want you to have some context here. In July of 2007, right before that real economic collapse, the Fed fund rate was about 5%. And as we had the collapse in the housing market, Ben Bernanke dropped the rates down to 0% over the course of a year. So by the time Obama took office in 2009, the U.S. was borrowing money at almost 0% interest. And many other major economies of the world like the U.K., England, and Japan, they all follow this gameplay with 0% interest rates. And particularly in the United States, everyone took advantage of it. Now there's more to it, because the Fed was also buying United States debt. But we'll just talk about the rates right now, so I don't overwhelm you with all this info. The point I'm explaining to you is that since 2009, when Obama took office, money was cheap, basically free for banks. And this was how they spurred economic growth. If you go down these years here, since the Great Recession, economic empowerment was sorely due to the fact that people were able to borrow money at a very low cost. People were able to start buying nice homes again. People were able to invest in their businesses. People were able to take more business risk because money was free. Not for everyone, I might add, but for the wealthy, absolutely. So the next question may be, well, were rates at zero forever? No. At the end of 2015, the Fed increased rates for the first time in six years to a quarter percent, 0.25. And then over three years, they gradually raised the rates to the level that we are at right now. In December of 2018, the Fed raised rates to 2.25% to 2.5%, which again is exactly at the same level that we're currently at right now, at this moment. At this point, Trump is in his two years of his presidency. But what happened after they got rates to the level that we're currently at? If you think back and remember, the economy could not handle it. During 2018, while the Fed was raising rates, the economy couldn't handle it and we saw major moves in the stock market. Like this article from CNN shows you, 2018 was the worst for stocks in 10 years. This was because of the rate increases. They were gradual, but the market could not take it. Maybe you don't remember the Dow dropping 800 points in October of 2018. That was a big deal back then. Tech companies saw the sharpest losses, as analysts say investors are worried about rising interest rates. Mar and maybe you don't remember that Trump blamed the drop solely on the Fed. What he's done is 50 billion a month in quantitative tightening. That's ridiculous. What he's done is he raised interest rates too fast. You I've worry been he's going to hurt your right. reelection. I think the economy is so strong, we're going to bowl through it. But I'm not happy with uh, his actions. No, I don't think he's done a good job. I think this, if he didn't raise rates, Obama had very low rates. So Obama was playing with funny money. I wasn't. I'm playing with the real stuff. So Obama was playing with funny money. I wasn't. I'm playing with the real stuff. The problem was that the rates were too high. The economy couldn't take it. So the next year, the Fed had to admit that they were wrong about rates and they had to convince the market that they were going to still provide the liquidity and prop up the market when they needed to. And in August of 2019, they started dropping rates again, a quarter at a time, bringing the rate down from 2.25 to 1.5 by October. And once the Fed gave those assurances, the stock market continued to climb again because they had the promise of the Fed that they would be there to prop up the market. All of this is important to understand. When the debt levels in the United States were lower than what we are currently at right now, the market was not able to maintain itself when the Fed raised interest rates to the level that we're currently at right now. And they brought these rates up gradually over three years. At this time, they brought these rates up in four months. But let me continue with the history. When COVID hit, the Fed immediately stepped in and they had the perfect scapegoat to go back to 
Now to the economic health of the country. The Federal Reserve is taking sweeping action to try to protect the economy from the coronavirus. Fed Chairman Jerome Powell announced that interest rates will be drastically cut in one of the biggest Fed moves since the 2008 financial crisis. The Fed cut its benchmark rate by a full percentage point to a range between zero and one quarter percent. And starting today, the Fed will start buying $500 billion in Treasury securities and $200 billion in mortgage-backed securities in order to introduce money into the economy. Some economists express concern that by using the biggest tool in its arsenal at this point, it will not be able to significantly affect the economy down the line. Some economists express concern that by using the biggest tool in its arsenal at this point, it will not be able to significantly affect the economy down the line. So by March 16th, 2020, they brought rates back down to 0%, and the stock market started booming again. In the beginning of the pandemic, the stock market tanked. If you remember, in March of 2020, stocks crashed. Like this article from CNBC says, Dow drops nearly 3,000 points as coronavirus collapse continues. Worst day since 1987. And after the Fed lowered the rates to zero, the stock market took off again. Same thing, reaching record highs even during a pandemic. If you follow it, you'll always notice the same trend. When the Fed says that they're going to keep rates low and people feel that the Fed is going to step in for them, the market continues to move higher. And this is how we got to all these high levels in the market. What happened to the market during the pandemic was instant. And again, it's all because the Fed stepped in and brought rates to 0%. If you remember that, actually, they promised to keep rates low till 2023. And they kept rates at zero until we got to 2022. And now that we're here, in 2022, inflation is now the concern. And in March, two years after they dropped rates to zero, they now say that they have to stop inflation by raising rates. And they have raised the rates from zero to 2.25% in only four months. And things in the market over the summer were quiet and uneventful because the market was assuming that the Fed was not going to be raising rates aggressively anymore because they said inflation was going down, even though it was by 0.1%. It was just all deception. But now, after the inflation report at the beginning of this week, everyone has now gone back to reality that the Fed is still going to be aggressive and continue on their path of raising rates. And next week, we will see the rates go to 3% at minimum the highest we have seen it go in close to 15 years. And so everyone that actually understands the markets are now preparing for a recession. And that's the nice way of actually saying it. New data from the Commerce Department is showing that the economy shrank from April to June. It's the second straight quarter where the economy declined and the latest sign that we may be headed for a recession, as some economists are now saying we're already there. I think we're entering a recession unseen like any other where the bottom half are going to get devastated and those in the upper quarter to upper 10 percent uh, will spend less, not do as well, but pretty much weather the storm. So this gap between the rich and the poor is going to get wider and wider. The mainstream media is now admitting a recession is pretty much inevitable. But outside of mainstream media, everyone that understands the markets are saying that we're about to see the crash of all crashes. People warning that everyone is going to lose everything. Uh, Seth Carpenter, Morgan Stanley Chief Global Economist, is with us now to talk about the global goings on and, and the economic picture right now. Um, it feels sort of like we're on a precipice globally, but it's not sort of a sharp precipice, right? I mean, how are you thinking about the big picture right now? I think right now, uh, less of a precipice, more the tide is going out. I think mm. there is, there have been for, for months now sort of these storm clouds of recession looming, and now is the time where I think the, the storm is really coming. If you think so let's put it in context. What I just gave you was the narrative that they have been playing out and just by this, you should understand that problems are on the horizon. In 2018, where the markets were not able to handle that rate increase, and if you also remember, Congress was battling over the debt ceiling. The United States debt at that time, in 2018, was at $21 trillion. But four years later now, in 2022, rates are back to where they were at when the market couldn't handle it. And now our debt is at $30.8 trillion, almost $31 trillion, just four years. I have always said this is all about debt and that we're in a massive debt bubble that is about to pop. 
If you just go back to the housing collapse of 2007, 2008, do you remember what happened? People were buying homes on these low interest variable rate mortgages that were affordable until the rates started to rise. Those variable rate mortgages moved up by 1% and people could not afford their payments and they could not sell their homes and everything collapsed. The problem is we have such short term memory because this is exactly where we're at today, except it's with everything from credit cards, equity lines, anything with a variable rate and the rates are exploding fast. I mean, right now, in regards to the Great Reset, they're saying that the global housing market is in reset right now. Mortgage rates are now topping 6% for the first time since 2008. Mind you, mortgage rates in January on a 30-year fix was at 3.25%. In less than a year, the rates doubled. We are right in the middle of a massive economic swing. The economics of the United States, Japan, Europe, UK, China, have literally swung in a completely different direction over just six months. And it's not getting better or getting worse. And I want you to have all that historical context as I now take you into this current narrative. First, let me explain, we're not at the point of the dollar collapse yet. Right now, the dollar is strong. I will explain how I see that event happening. But the dollar collapse is about hyperinflation. This current agenda is just about inflation. It's just a precursor, the leading up to it all. So at this time that we're currently at, understand that the Fed right now are working against inflation, which is actually a fight against us all. Please place this in your understanding as you move throughout these times. What the Fed is doing by raising rates is they're trying to slow down the economy. Understand what they want to do. They want to slow the economy so that demand slows so that people are not shopping and spending so many dollars. But in order to do this, people need to feel pain. And they normally don't like saying that, but at this time, they're actually admitting that this is what's going to happen. On Friday, Powell acknowledged the pain some Americans will face as interest rates climb. Reducing inflation is likely to require a sustained period of below trend growth. Moreover, there will very likely be some softening of labor market conditions. While higher interest rates, slower growth, and softer labor market conditions will bring down inflation, they will also bring some pain to households and businesses. When companies are making less and they have less demand, they then have less demand for their employees. And this is when we see layoffs and job closings. And that is the goal. They want to slow things down so that they can reduce the prices that they are saying have risen because of demand. But that's not correct. Inflation is about the overprinting of the currency, also with the fact that other countries are declining in their use of it. And again, I must repeat, this is not just the United States, but the three major economies of the world are all in a looming crisis that has not yet been seen or felt yet. The United States, China, and Europe. You can also add the UK to this as well. They all have massive economic issues. Don't think China is immune to all this. They're not a safe haven. They are also dealing with massive economic problems that they have yet to deal with. They have a huge debt bubble from their real estate market that's ready to implode. The bottom line is that the next moments that are coming are about to bring economic pain. And the heads of these central banks have actually said so. You should be going into these times preparing for major economic problems. The dollar collapse I do not believe will happen until the Fed reverses course after the economic pain hits. It's when they actually go back and lower rates again, like they always do, completely bringing about a lack of confidence in the dollar. But we're not at that point yet. But either way, please understand that economic pain is absolutely on the horizon, and we all should be ready for it. Let me note that though I have explaining this in regards to the United States, all the other countries around the world, whether you're in those other countries I mentioned or not, you're all a part of this because your central banks are trying to keep up with what the United States is doing with the dollar. The whole world economic system is completely intertwined with the dollar. So as the United States has a problem, the whole world will have a problem. This is why we have seen so many other central banks at this time raising rates. This is all coordinated. Do not feel that this is only about the United States. It's very important that you stay in reality about the whole situation. But listen, 
this economic situation is not the only problem on the horizon. Not only is there economic pain coming, but our daily life all around the world is going to get harder because there is a food crisis about to hit as well. Also add to that an energy crisis. All throughout this year, we have been hearing warnings about food manufacturing. They have been warning what the Ukraine war is doing to food manufacturing and food shortages. They have been warning about supply chains. The world is going to have to deal with a food shortage that will begin to take form and absolutely felt in 2023. This morning, the U.S. and the world bracing for food shortages as the war in Ukraine rages on. President Biden, speaking to NATO leaders in Brussels Thursday, said because of sanctions on Russia, food shortages are coming. The price of these sanctions is not just imposed upon Russia. It's imposed upon an awful lot of countries as well, including European countries and our country as well. The U.S., Canada, and Europe are major wheat producers, but Ukraine and Russia produce about one-third of the world supply, and less food means higher prices. The acceleration of already high food, fertilizer, and fuel prices has triggered a global crisis that could drive millions more into extreme poverty, magnifying anger and malnutrition, while threatening to raise the global humanitarian caseload to new highs and erase hard-won development gains. Food pricing is our number one problem right now as a result of all this perfect storm for 2022. But 2023, it very well will be a food availability problem. If you have not placed this in your awareness, you must do so now. There is also an energy crisis coming. This is very specific to Europe, but it will affect everyone. Russia has shut off natural gas to Europe indefinitely. It looks so mundane and yet it is so important. This is the Nord Stream pipeline, which has long brought gas from Russia to Europe. It's a mainstay for untold millions of people. And now it sits idle, switched off by its operator Gazprom. Russia's biggest company, controlled by the Kremlin. It's an act of economic aggression that could be as consequential as it was inevitable. There are five main gas supply routes between Russia and Europe. Nord Stream 1 is the biggest pipeline running from Russia to Germany. Before the war, it was delivering more than 150 million cubic metres of gas per day. In June, Gazprom cut that flow to around 60 million because it said of annual maintenance. But in August, the flow dropped again, now down to about 20% of capacity and European gas prices doubled as a result. Then on Wednesday, Gazprom halted the flow of gas completely, citing a leak in the main gas turbine. And now the company says Nord Stream will remain closed indefinitely. This is the oil leak Gazprom claims to have hobbled the pipeline. Few think it's a plausible excuse. And this coming winter will be a very difficult one because there will not be enough power to heat homes and businesses. This, again, is something that you must place in your understanding. And then you add to this, war is still on the horizon. Currently, they seem to be pushing the narrative that Putin is about to do something severe and unexpected soon. And the United States has finally admitted that the Iran deal does not seem likely. The U.S. is also working on sanctions against China, which is a very big deal. Just last week, North Korea just went over their rules of nuclear engagement and why they would use nuclear weapons. After years of stalled denuclearization talks, North Korea reaffirmed its status as a nuclear state on Friday. State media reported that Pyongyang passed a new law enshrining the right to use preemptive nuclear strikes to protect itself. An original 2013 law first outlined North Korea's status as a nuclear state. It stipulated that the country could retaliate with nuclear weapons to repel an invasion or an attack from a hostile, nuclear-capable country. Now the new law passed on Friday goes beyond that. If Pyongyang detects what they call an imminent attack by weapons of mass destruction against them, they've granted themselves the right to strike first. It's an apparent reference to a similar strategy that South Korea unveiled in July, aimed at North Korea. The North's leader Kim Jong-un said that was a sign of a deteriorating situation. He added that their new law bars any more denuclearization talks from happening and declared the point of no return in a speech.
Putin and Xi just met on their first face-to-face -face since the Ukraine war, signaling their alliance. Adding to that, we just had the government of Germany give out a warning that we will all remember where we were on September 24th. Dear colleagues, this 24th of September 2022 will be a day that remains in our memories as a day we will say, I remember exactly where I was. And then we have Denver Emergency Management giving out bug out bags for National Preparedness Month. September Preparedness Month in Denver is now handing out free bug out bags to help you just in case you run into emergency. Lisa D'Souza live at that free event at the Montbello Rec Center. Lisa, all right, I asked you last time, I need to know the checklist of everything I got to put in my <laughs> bug out bag. We've got it all ready to go. Good morning, Ashley. So this event officially opens up here at the Montbello Rec Center at 10 o'clock this morning from 10 a.m. to 2. You can stop by and get a free bug out bag. Just like I said, this is all for National Preparedness Month. And this is all being put on by Denver Emergency Management. All right, so let's take a look at some of the items that you can get for free by coming by. You got batteries. Looks like we've got some matches, a can opener, toilet paper, paper towels, toilet paper, paper towels. We've got cotton balls and then really everything you would need from a first aid kit as well. We've got hydrogen peroxide, band-aids, other first aid essentials, flashlights, really all sorts of things that you could potentially need in an emergency. So this is all part of a national campaign. If you can't make it out today, again, it's from 10 a.m. to 2 here at the Montbello Rec Center. But if you can't make it out today, there is another event happening on Saturday, September 24th. So two opportunities to get these free emergency preparedness bags. That is over. Very similar to how I showed the radiation warnings in New York and New Jersey a couple of months ago. To me, they seem to be playing a lot of games. I don't really know about that cryptic message from Germany, but it's just too much to ignore. We are on the precipice of change. And now that they have signaled that they are ready to proceed, we should be ready for anything. And just because everyone else is living in a state of blindness and distraction, that does not mean that you should be. I went so heavy in explaining the economic problem because you have to understand that no matter what, we have a problem on our hands. There's no way to get around it. If they continue to raise rates, there's a problem. If they reverse course and lower rates, there's a problem. There is a perfect storm brewing and is being played out right in front of us. If you're not living in awareness of this, you must change your level of thinking and be ready. When Yahusha prophesied about it, what it would be like in the last days? Matthew chapter 21, verses 3 through 8 says, Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming, and of the end of the age? And Yahusha answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Messiah, and will deceive many. Now you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are beginning of sorrows. And so we're seeing this right in front of our eyes. And if you are one that says you do not need to pay attention, then you are being deceived. You should understand that it's because we are in Messiah and we have been looking at the world through his eyes and not following these wolves and their deceptions and distractions. This is why we are able to see what is happening and be prepared for it. He has shown us and told us of the things to come. And you must allow yourself at this time to be led by him in fullness. Preparation is what everyone must be doing at this time. Spiritual preparation is the first and foremost important one. The reason for my last two videos about his name was not about salvation. It was about preparation. He has placed it on me that we need to be specific on who it is that we are calling upon and believe in. There is something moving in the spiritual realm and he is moving us to be called out and separate from the rest of this world. As I have watched these people worship the queen and celebrate her, having their church services in honor of her. They are completely praying to Jesus and using his name often. Let us worship God. Death has been overcome. 
These are the words of hope expressed and centered around Jesus who died and rose again. And this is clearly something Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth acknowledged and personally embraced. God of mercy, we pray your comfort to all members of the royal family in their time of grief and loss. Enfold them in your love, we pray you. Uphold them in their sorrow and grant that they may be confident of your mercy and the promises made to us in Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah, right. I am not a part of them. And being that I believe that the Antichrist is rising right in the midst of all this, I am making sure that I make a clear distinction of my obedience, of my allegiance, and my alliance to the God of the Hebrews, Yahuwah. There's too much deception going on. And in this time, I believe we must be very intentional of declaring who we worship. Yah desires his name declared. And as we move during these tumultuous times, I will call upon his name. This is a very strong time for battle and spiritual warfare. And he has led me to be strong in it and declare his name. His name has been proclaimed by the Hebrews since the beginning. And I will continue to declare it as we prepare ourselves for him. This preparation is about knowing what God we serve. When there is persecution of the saints and the Antichrist is declaring himself God, for me to know who is really aligned with Yah, I will need to hear a little bit more than I believe in God and the Lord. Let us worship God. We're going to have to use a lot of strong discernment if people just use these general titles because evil people, demonic people, are using these titles right now. God did. Hope did. Please. The album is called God Did and the title song is called God, God did. did. So you understand what I'm saying? This is right. God Did. Yeah. Meaning as in all this is happening, we have to give all glory to God. Amen. 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 You but know I first would like to thank God. First of all, we'd like to thank God. First of all, I'd like to thank God. I would like to thank God because she makes everything possible. I just want to thank God. I'd like to thank God. I'd like to thank God. I'd like to thank God. Um, I'd like to thank um, I'd like to thank God. We want to thank God. And we would also love to thank God. And and what else is there to say? Um, oh, of course. Thank God. God is good. I am very grateful to him. I don't know what's going on, but thank you, Jesus and God. Especially the Lord. My God. You up there. God, thank you so very much. Thank God. Thank so in preparation for these times that we're in, he is leading me to tell all boldly to proclaim his name. And that was the basis for the last couple of videos. For me, it's preparation for the times to come spiritual warfare but besides that point he wants us to live in faith and trust in him and to have our spiritual houses in order make sure that you have been putting your trust in him and you have been yielding to his spirit make sure that you are not quenching his spirit make sure you understand how to hear from him and how to follow his voice over the years we have been in strong spiritual training with him making sure that we understand how to be led by his spirit and not move through a spirit of fear or by our flesh thinking that we know it all. This time of training has been crucial because we must know how to follow him and his voice. And he has been working with all of us individually who have desired him. He has been working in all of us to help us learn how to identify his voice and yield to it. As these time approach, you need to make sure that you are strongly committed to him because when things change and move, you are only going to have him to depend on. And though everyone may be telling you to go right, if he is telling you, go left, your relationship should be strong enough that you're able to follow him. You need to trust and commit yourself to him and his will. In regards to mental preparations, it is simple. Live with the expectation of these problems ahead. And when they occur, you'll be ready for them instead of being caught off guard. They want everyone asleep and unaware. So you must be the opposite. Understand they have said to expect pain. And when they say that, expect it to be 10 times worse than what they're alluded to. If you're still living in a mindset of maybe not, and you just live in your distractions, you seriously have a problem on the horizon. Here's the other thing. Expect the unexpected. With all these problems that I mentioned, I don't even think that these events will be the main catalyst for change or the main scapegoat that starts it. 
I believe that there is an unexpected event that we are not aware of that will be the main catalyst of change. But understand, it doesn't matter what it is that comes if you are first spiritually prepared and then mentally. When you are mentally prepared for things, you allow yourself to not be moved irrationally and move through chaos. And trust me, what they desire for the rest of the world is to be moved through chaos. Mental preparation allows you to move in a more proactive, decisive way that Yah is leading. Now, in regards to physical preparations, remember Proverbs chapter 22, verse 3. A prudent man foresees evil and hides himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. If you do not have food or supplies in your home, now is the time to get some. Get some canned goods that can get you through some hard months. I have a list of supplies in this preparation list that you can use. The link is in the description box. But listen, when getting supplies, don't overwhelm yourself. You're not gathering supplies to make it in your home through the Great Tribulation. Don't look at it like that. You are preparing to make it through at least the first six months of chaos. Things will move very fast and those not prepared will be desperate and move irrationally. You want to make sure that you are not one of them. During that time, you will fast, you will pray, and you will heed and listen to Yah's spirit as he directs you for what is to come after. Do you remember how things were in the first months of COVID? How there were no food on the shelves and people had no jobs and money? That was a period of conditioning for what is to come. Make sure you learn from that and make sure that you're ready. Please understand that you do not want to be a part of any of that. You want to remain in your homes. You handle the immediate problems in front of you and don't worry about the things that you are not in control of. Be prepared for a period with no food and no job. In my view, I wouldn't worry about people kicking you out of your home because it would be literally too many people to do this to. They will be able to remove people out of their homes because people just don't have any food and any supplies. And then they'll just herd them into wherever they want them to go. You do not want to be a part of them. If you're already at risk of losing your job and see things are not looking good, like if you're in retail and customers aren't shopping the same way or business seems to be slowing, make plans and know what you're going to do. Maybe move in with relatives or friends. Reduce your lifestyle. Everyone's situation is different and there's not one answer for all. What I can say is that you need to be prepared for problems and have at least some thoughts of what you can do. I have made more thorough videos about this subject, so please go back and watch these videos and perhaps you will see the answers to the questions that you have in them. Yah has a plan for us and he will cover us, but you must trust in him. Trusting in him does not mean that bad things will not happen and it does not mean that you will not have issues. But if you are his, then you are understanding that no matter what happens, in the end, you are a winner and you will be redeemed. But again, be prepared to stay out of the chaos with everyone else and be separate from everyone else who has lived in distraction. If people are not following Yah, there is no need to tell them what you are doing to prepare. This next point is important. It's about your money. Please don't believe that your money will save you. For a great majority, you will be wiped out. In the midst of the debt crisis is a banking crisis that will come from what happens after the implosion of debt. You must remember that this is all about moving into a new economic system, which is based upon Web3, blockchain, and cryptocurrencies. I made a video about that as well. If you have not watched it or don't understand that subject, please watch that video. But anyways, what is coming is all about resetting the system. And unfortunately, this will be in regards to our money as well. Most people will lose the money they have in the banks, whether it is taken or restricted from removal, or because of hyperinflation, the money will be worthless. They are prepared for bank runs, and trust these banks are not holding enough money to give everyone back their deposits. This again goes back to mental preparation. If you understand this, this will not affect you as bad as it does those who are still in denial that this can happen. The point I'm stressing to everyone is that the world is ready for change. They've signaled it, and they're preparing to introduce their false messiah. But he will not come until after the chaos and their narrative is fully formed. In the meantime, they plan to reset everything. And you should be moving right now with these expectations. Do not ignore this. Be proactive and ready. Because once they raise race this next time, we are literally heading into no man's land. 
We do not know how it will all go down, and we still have other rate increases after that. Expect war and a major event. Expect chaos with the elections, because the United States democracy must also be attacked in their agenda. Expect to be without, and then understand how you will handle it. This is not to have a pessimistic view, but it's reality. Most people in this world understand that things are not right. Things are not the same. And whether people want to admit it or not, they recognize that there are problems on the horizon. It's just that many people that are weak are unable and unwilling to actually deal with it mentally. And those are the people that will succumb to whatever agenda they have cooked up for them when it all comes forward. If you remember what happened during the times of COVID and people were unprepared and they just did what they were told, it will be worse than that. If you hold on to trust in Messiah, then he will guide you and he will keep you. I'm able to speak of these things with confidence and conviction because of my trust in him. Because of Yah, I feel secure. I have trust and I have peace in him. So it's about our faith. You cannot allow fear to dominate you and control you. Remember, Yahuwah is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices and with my song, I will praise him. That's Psalm chapter 28, verse 7. Thus says Yahuwah, Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart departs from Yahuwah. For he shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when good comes, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land which is not inhabited. Blessed is the man who trusts in Yahuwah and whose hope is in Yahuwah. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river, and will not fear when he comes, but its leaves will be green, and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. That's Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 5 through 8. And it's basically saying that those who trust in Yah, even when problems are on the horizon and challenges are coming, they will stand through it and still grow and yield fruit they will still be righteous and do his will. It's because they trust in him. And that's why our trust needs to be firmly planted in Yah. If you say you believe in him and trust in him, and he is your God, this is the time to walk in it, to show it through your actions. Trust in him. Do not let fear provoke you. Let your trust in him convict you. Do not let fear make you irrational. Let your reliance on his spirit lead you in confidence. Do not put trust in the government or in man. Like that scripture said, cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength. For all of us believers, Yahuwah is our strength and it is him who we will trust and abide in. It is him who we will rest upon. After watching this video, you should now know without a shadow of a doubt that there are hard times ahead, but you also know who your source is. Our help is in the name of Yahuwah, who made heaven and earth. That's Psalm chapter 124, verse 8. And being that these times we are in are all about rebellion against him and rejection of his son whom he sent, we must live full in truth and put our hope and trust in him. I made this for everyone so that everyone can know without a shadow of doubt the times that we're in. Now that you know, use this time wisely and be led by the spirit of Yah who leads all in righteousness who follow him. Follow him and trust in him. Please believe he is your only answer and solution to what is on the way. Be assured of this and be ready. Be blessed. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. Okay. Thanks again for watching. If this has blessed you, please make sure to like it and share it with others. If you have not done so already, please make sure you subscribe to this channel. If for whatever reason you no longer see the videos on this channel, please look for me on my website, truthunedited.com. Don't forget to follow this ministry on Facebook and Instagram as well. As always, I would like to give a special thank you to all those who have donated to this ministry. Your contributions are a huge blessing to this ministry. Please continue to pray for me and this ministry. I truly thank you for your support and your prayers. Thank you for your obedience to Yah's call on your heart. 
I'm humbled by your support, and I am very thankful for you. Thank you. Thanks again, everyone, for watching. I love you all.